Welcome back to the Classical Liberal Arts Academy's Petty School Reading Program. In this lesson, we'll continue our study of language and reading in the classical tradition. Let's go ahead and get started. In this lesson, we will learn how Latin sounds changed over time. This is a very important lesson, so be careful to pay attention. The sounds we've studied so far in petty school reading were those used by the old Romans. These sounds are part of classical Latin. What sort of Latin have you studied so far in petty school? You have studied classical Latin, the Latin of the Old Romans. You can remember from your Bible studies that the Romans were the ones who crucified our Lord Jesus. After Jesus died and rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, he started the Catholic Church. When the Catholic Church grew, the sounds of Latin changed. We call this ecclesiastical or church Latin. What do we call the sounds of Latin in the Catholic Church? We call these sounds ecclesiastical, or Church Latin. In this lesson, we're going to learn about ecclesiastical, or Church Latin. This is the Old Roman alphabet. You should know all of these letters by name and you should know all of their sounds. Let's read them together just for a review. A, B, K, D, E, F, G, H, I, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, X, Y, and Z. This is the Old Roman alphabet. When the sounds of Latin changed, the letters of Latin changed as well. We need to learn about two letters that were added to the Old Roman alphabet. If you look at this chart, you can see the two new letters that were added to the Latin alphabet in the yellow boxes. These letters are a little bit strange because they're really not new letters. They're just different sounds and forms given to old letters. In the first yellow box, we see the letter that we would call J. The letter J in Latin is really just a different form of the vowel E. Whenever we see this letter J in Latin, we're going to read it with the sound J. J. We'll learn more about that later. The letter in the second yellow box on the bottom is what we would call V or V. The letter V is really just another form of the Latin vowel U. Anytime we see the letter V in reading, we read it with the sound V, V. To learn about the changes that took place when we moved from classical to ecclesiastical Latin, I'd like to share a song with you to help you remember the rules.
We're going to learn that there were seven basic changes of Church Latin. Seven basic things that changed as we moved from Classical Latin into Church Latin. Let's read the question and answer together. And in the next slide, I'll teach you a song that will help you to remember this rule. What are the seven basic changes of Church Latin? The seven changes of Church Latin are the diphthongs I and OI are read as E. Ke and GE are soft with E and E as CHE, CHI, JE, and G. GE and N together sound as ENYE. And before vowels at the start of words, the vowel E becomes J and U becomes V. In the next slide, we'll learn a song. You can play it as many times as you want to help remember the rule. And after that, we'll look at each one of these changes one by one to make them very clear for you. At the end of this lesson, you're going to be reading in Latin. The seven changes of Church Latin are The diphthongs I and oi are red as A K and G are soft with A and E As CHE, CHI, J and G G and N together sound as N, Y and before vowels at the start of words, the vowel E becomes J, and do becomes V. The first change that we need to learn has to do with the diphthong I. In Classical Latin, we learned that the vowel A ah makes the sound A, ah, and the vowel E makes the sound E. Eh. And when we put them together and form a diphthong, we read it I, I. Well, in Church Latin, the pronunciation of this diphthong changed. It was no longer pronounced I, but simply read as E, E. Point to the green dot under the vowel A ah, and we'll read this diphthong with church pronunciation. E, E, E. Here we find the diphthong in a word. In classical Latin, we would read this as I tas, I tas. In Church Latin, we're going to read it differently because of the change in the diphthong. Point to the green dot under the diphthong and we'll read this word using church pronunciation. Etas, etas. Etas. In Classical Latin, it would be aetas. In Church Latin, it's etas, etas. The second change in Church Latin has to do with this diphthong. In Classical Latin, we learned that the vowel O is read O and the vowel E is read E. When we put these two vowels together in Classical Latin, we read this diphthong as OI, OI, OI. In Church Latin, the sound of this diphthong changed. It was no longer read as OI, but as E, E.
point to the green dot under the vowel O, and we'll read this diphthong together with church pronunciation. A, A, A. In classical Latin, we would read this word as oi de pus, oi de pus, or oi de pus. In church Latin, we're going to change the sound of the stiff thong at the beginning of the word. Let's read it together with church pronunciation. E de pus, e de pus, e de pus. In classical pronunciation, it would be oi de pus. In church pronunciation, it's e de pus. Therefore, the first two changes of church Latin have to do with these two diphthongs. In classical Latin, we would read them as I and oi. In church Latin, we read them both as e, e. The third change in church Latin has to do with the consonant k. In classical Latin, the letter k is always read with a hard sound. K, k, k. In church Latin, that can change. Any time the letter k is followed by a vowel or a diphthong that sounds like e or e, the sound of the letter K changes from K to CH, CH, CH. Point to the syllable in the pink box and let's read it together in classical pronunciation. In classical pronunciation, we would read this syllable as CHI, CHI. In church pronunciation, we read this syllable as che, che. Point to the syllable in the green box. In classical pronunciation, we would read this as ke, ke. In church pronunciation, we read this as che, che because the letter K is followed by the sound E or E. CHE Point to the syllable in the blue box. In classical Latin, we would read this as KI, KI. But in church Latin, we read this as CHI, CHI. Because the letter K is followed by the sound E or E. Chi. Point to the syllable in the yellow box. In classical Latin, we would read this as koi, koi. In church Latin, we read this as che, che. Why? Because the letter K is followed by the sound E or E. Che, che. Any time the letter K is followed by the sound E or E, we read it as che, che. Here we see a word that begins with the consonant K, and K is followed by the sound E. In classical Latin, that doesn't matter. We would read this as kailum, kailum. But in church Latin, any time the letter K is followed by the sound E or E, we read the letter K with the sound 
In Church Latin, we read this word as celum, celum, celum. In Classical Latin, it's caelum. In Church Latin, it's celum. Here's another Latin word with the consonant ke. In Classical Latin, we would read this as cena. Cena. In Church Latin, we would read it differently because the letter K is followed by the sound E or E. In Church Latin, we would read this word as Cena. Cena. In Classical Latin, it would be Cena. In Church Latin, it's Cena. Here's another word with the letter K. In Classical Latin, we would read this word as kibus, kibus. But in Church Latin, the sound of the word changed because the letter K is followed by the sound E or E. In Church Latin, we would read this word chibus, chibus. In Classical Latin, it would be kibus. In Church Latin, it's chibus, chibus, because the letter K is followed by the sound E. Here's another word with the letter K. In Classical Latin, we would read this word coiptum, coiptum. In Church Latin, it would sound different. The letter K is followed by a diphthong that is pronounced E. Any time the letter K is followed by the sound E or E, we read it with the sound CH. In Church Latin, this would be read CHEPTUM. Cheptum. In Classical Latin, it would be coiptum. In Church Latin, it's ceptum. Ceptum. The fourth change in Church Latin is just like the third change. We learned that the letter G was pronounced with a hard sound. G, G, G. In Church Latin, that changes sometimes. Any time that the letter G is followed by the sounds E or E, it's read with a softer sound, J, J, J. Any time the letter G is followed by the sounds E or E, it's read J, J. Look at the syllable in the pink box. In Classical Latin, this would be read G, G. In Church Latin, it's read J, J. Look at the syllable in the green box. In Classical Latin, this would be read G, G. In Church Latin, it's read G. G. Any time the letter G is followed by the sound E or E, it's read with a soft sound, J, J. Here's a word that begins with the letter G. In Classical Latin, we would read this word, Gem, Ma, Gem, Ma. Do you hear the hard g, g, g sound? Gemma, gemma. In Church Latin, this sound changed. Because the letter g is followed by the sound e or e, we would read this word gemma, gemma, gemma. In Classical Latin, it would be gemma.
In church Latin, it's Gemma. Gemma. Here's another word with the consonant ge. In classical Latin, this would be read as gigas, gigas. In church Latin, the sound will change because the letter ge is followed by the sound e or e. If you look at the second letter ge, you can see that it's followed by the sound Ah, that letter ge will not change its sound, but will sound just like classical Latin. In church Latin, we would read this word as g gas, g gas, g gas. Do you see the difference in the sound of the letter ge when it's followed by the sound e or e? And when it's followed by any other sound? Gigas. In classical Latin, we would say gigas. In church Latin, we read gigas. The fifth change in church Latin is found when the letters g and n are side by side. Any time we find the letters G and N together, we read them with a sound that's called ny, ny. The sound ny is simply ny, ny, ny. Any time the letters G and N are read together in Church Latin, we read ny, ny. Look at the syllable in the red box. In classical Latin, we would read this as gna, gna, gna. In church Latin, we read this as nya, nya, nya. Look at the syllable in the green box. In classical Latin, we would read this gne, gne, gne. In church Latin, we read nye, nye, nye. Look at the orange box. In classical Latin, we would read this as gni, gni, gni. In church Latin, we'll read this as nye, nye, nye. Look at the light blue box. In classical Latin, we would read this as gno, gno, gno. In church Latin, we'll read this as nyo, nyo, nyo. And lastly, in the yellow box, we would read this syllable as gnu, gnu. In classical Latin, but in church Latin, we read it new, new, new. The letters G and N, when they're together in speech, are read as nya, nya, in church Latin. Let's look at an example of a word in Latin where we find the letters G and N together. In classical Latin, we would read this word as regnum, regnum. In church Latin, the sound changes. We would read this word in church Latin as renium, renium. In classical Latin, it would be regnum. In church Latin, it's renium. The sixth change in Church Latin, as we said before, has to do with the vowel E. Any time we find the vowel E at the beginning of a word in front of a vowel, 
that vowel E is going to change in Church Latin into what we call a J. Look at the syllable in the red box. In classical Latin, this would be the letter E and the letter A. We would read it as ya. In Church Latin, we read this as ja. Ja. Look at the green box. In classical Latin, this would have been the vowel E followed by the vowel A. We would have read it ye, ye. But in Church Latin, we read this j, j. Look at the orange box. In classical Latin, this would have been e. In Church Latin, we read this as g. G. Look at the light blue box. In classical Latin, this would have been io, io. In church Latin, it's jo, jo. Lastly, in the yellow box, in classical Latin, this would have been you, you. In church Latin, we read it as ju. Jew. Here's a word that in classical Latin would have been written E E S U. You can see the word in the light gray letters. In classical Latin, we would read this as Iesu. Iesu. In church Latin, that first vowel, E, is changed into the letter we call J. In Church Latin, we would read this Jesu, Jesu. In Classical Latin, it would be Iesu. But in Church Latin, that changes and it's read Jesu. Here's another Latin word. And if you look at the gray letters at the top, you can see that in classical Latin, this would be spelled E-U-L-E-U-S. It would be read in classical Latin as U-L-I-U-S. U-L-I-U-S. In church Latin, that changes. That first letter E is written with J. The word in Church Latin is pronounced ju li us ju li us Julius. In Classical Latin, it was pronounced Iulius. In Church pronunciation, it is read Julius. The seventh and final change in Church Latin has to do with the vowel U. In Classical Latin, the vowel U was pronounced U. But sometimes, if the vowel came before another vowel, it would sound like W, W. Later, in Church Latin, the writers used two different symbols for the vowel U. When the vowel sounded like a vowel, U, they used the rounded shape that we know as the letter U. But when the letter U was used with the sound W, they used the old pointed shaped letter, which looks like our V. In Church Latin, any time we see the pointed letter V or V, we read it with the sound V, V. Look at the red box. In classical Latin, this would have been read wa, wa. In church Latin, it's read va, va. Look at the green box. In classical Latin, this would have been read we, we. But in church Latin, it's read ve, ve. Look at the orange box. In classical Latin, 
this would have been read, we, we. But in church Latin, it's read, v, v. Look at the light blue box. In classical Latin, this would have been read, wo, wo. But in church Latin, it changed to vo, vo. And lastly, in the light yellow box, you see the syllable that would have been read woo, woo, in classical Latin. But in church Latin, it came to be pronounced vu, vu, va, ve, vi, vo, vu, in church Latin. Here's an example of a word that in classical Latin began with a vowel u followed by a vowel. In classical Latin, this word would be read wale, wale. In church Latin, we read this vale, vale. Here's another word that in classical Latin began with a vowel u, followed by a vowel. In classical Latin, this word would have been read weni, weni. In church Latin, it's read as veni, veni. We've now looked at all of the seven changes of Church Latin, the changes that took place as we moved from Roman or Classical Latin to the Latin used by the Church. The seven changes of Church Latin are the diphthongs I and OI are read as E. K and G are soft with E and E, as CH, CH, J, and G. G and N together sound as NY. And before vowels, at the start of words, the vowel E becomes J, and U becomes V. In the next slide, you can listen to the song again to help you memorize this and master it. And then we'll wrap up and get to reading. The seven changes of church Latin are The diphthongs I and I are read as A K and G are soft with A and E as she, she, J, and G. G and them together sound as N, Y. And before vowels at the start of words, the vowel E becomes J. And to becomes B. You can use this chart to practice reading syllables in classical and in church pronunciation. Have a parent or an older brother or sister point to a syllable and you read it first in classical Latin and then in church Latin. If you need help, you can just back up through this lesson and find the slide where we explained how to read these sounds. Go ahead and practice with these. There's an important question that we need to answer. If you were walking through a library and picked a book off a shelf and that book was written in Latin, how would you know if you should use classical pronunciation or church pronunciation? There's a very simple rule to help you decide which pronunciation you should use. If the author of a book was an old Roman, then you should use classical pronunciation. 
For everything else, you should use church pronunciation. If the author was an old Roman, then classical. For everything else, church. Let's go ahead and look at an example. Now that you've studied all of the syllables of classical Latin, you can read anything that you find in classical Latin. On your screen, we have the first line from a famous ancient poem called the Aeneid. The Aeneid was written by a poet named Virgil who lived in Rome just before Jesus Christ came into the world. This first line is one of the most famous lines in all of poetry. We're going to read it together using classical pronunciation because Virgil was an old Roman. I'll read it slowly. You can read it with me and then practice on your own. Arma Virumque Cano Troiae Qui primus ab oris Italiam Fato Profugus Laviniaque Venit Hopefully you heard the sounds that belong to classical Latin that changed in church Latin. I've written them on the screen in red. Let's read it one more time and then you can practice. I'll read it a little bit faster this time so you can hear it. Arma virumque cano Troiae qui primus aboris Italiam fato profugus la viniaque venit. That is classical Latin. Now let's practice reading something from church Latin. On your screen, you'll see the Latin words to the prayer we all know, the Hail Mary. We're going to read this together using church pronunciation because the Hail Mary belongs to the church not to the old Romans. Let's read it together one syllable at a time using church pronunciation. The Hail Mary Ave Maria Gratia Plena Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesu. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. You should be able to read that just as I did one syllable at a time. You can practice with a parent or an older brother or sister. It's pretty easy. I'm going to read it again one more time quickly so that you can hear what it would sound like in normal church Latin. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesu. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc 
et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed this lesson in the Classical Liberal Arts Academy's Petty School Reading Program. We'll continue our study of language and reading in our next lesson. God bless.